right, so we are going to get into fractions. Um, the learning target or the standards that we are going are learning are I can use area model to determine if two fractions are equivalent. I can use length models to determine if two fractions are equivalent. I can model fractions with concrete objects. I can identify equivalent fractions. I can find fractions equivalent to a given fraction and I can recognize that when a whole is divided into more equal parts, the parts are smaller. So, we have already been talking about fractions a little bit um, with our morning work. Our morning work always has some type of fraction in it. So, y'all are already a little bit ahead of other classes. Let's put it that way. So, let's look at the focus for nine traits of critical thinking. I link. I apply knowledge to reach new understanding. Mm -hmm. When you link, you make connections between mathematic concepts you've already learned and the new concepts you are learning. When you link, you transfer what you know by applying it to new situations. You might also make connections to how the concept is used in everyday world or to how the concept is used in another subject such as science. In this unit, you will use models to determine equivalent fractions. What models for fractions have you used in the past? Write it down. Be writing in your book right now about the different models you have used in the past for fractions. Like the area model, the oh. well, you learned a, a different model when you were learning about it in third grade. And then the second trait, adapt. I adjust my actions and strategies to accomplish tasks. When you adapt, you think flexibly about mathematics. When you adapt, you try different strategies or use variety of tools to solve problems. In this unit, you will learn how to determine equivalent fractions using several methods. Why is it a good idea to know more than one way to solve a problem? Why is it important to know more than one way to solve a problem?
ma'am. All right, so looking at the first one, it says in this unit, you will model to determine equivalent fractions. What model for fractions have you used in the past? Models have you used in the past? Anybody? Somebody? Um, area model. Okay, area model. Because the area model is like with the One half, one half. Okay, but if I put it into fourths, so two fourths is equivalent to one half. What about the circle model? Oh, yeah. Yeah. One half is equivalent to two fourths. One half, two fourths. That's the one I was thinking about when I, because y'all learn it like that in third grade. Yeah. All right, it says in this unit, we'll learn how to determine equivalent fractions using several models. Why is it a good idea to know more than one way to solve a problem? Why is it important to know more than one way? Yes, Gabby. What, baby? Hold on, let me turn my volume up just a little bit. Say it again, Gabby. Okay, you're fine. All right, Kamani. Did you have? Did you like um? If you ever try one way and then get an answer that doesn't make sense or isn't right, you can try another method and then you get the right answer. Right. So say you're doing a multiple choice test and you do it one way, but none of the answers are what you got. You can do it a different way to see if you did something wrong with the other way. Yes, sir. It's just there to help you to know all the different ways. It's just a good strategy to use. All right, so looking at vocabulary when it comes to fractions. Obviously, we know, well, let's look at concept exploration. So next page, page 112. It says, color the first model in each pair to show the first fraction in the equation. To show the second fraction in the equation, divide the second model into equal parts and color it. So the first one says six twelfths. Let's count, make sure there's 12 on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we need a color in how many? Six, two, three, four, five, six. And then a half of this one would be that. So are they equivalent? Yes, they are equivalent. One half and six twelfths. Because if I multiply one half by six, top and bottom, then that would give me 6 twelfths. So now we're going to be, it says 4 twelfths equals 1 third. Let's see if that's true. So how many blocks am I going to color in now? Four. Four. One, two, three, four. Four. Now, I need to break this one up into thirds. 12 divided by 3 is what? 4. So, I'm going to go every 4 blocks and I'm going to break it up. So, now it's even. So, 1 third 
Is it equivalent to 412? Mm -hmm. Yes. And now we're going to look at 9 twelfths and 3 fourths. So 9 twelfths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's 3 fourths. So we've got to break it up into four. So that means there's going to be three in each block. Three. Because I'm breaking that into thirds. Fourths. So then I'm going to color in three of them. So that means they are equivalent. All right, what is the denominator of a fraction called? No, what is the denominator in a fraction? The number on the bottom, what's the numerator? The top. What is an equivalent fraction? Two fractions that what? They equal, equivalent, equal. Let's go to concept development right here. Concept development on page 114. A couple ways to look at um, equivalent fractions are either looking at a the model, okay, like the fraction chart, which I have one. I saw it the other day. Let me show you. We have a one hole. Then we have one half. So two halves is equivalent to one hole. And then we have thirds. So how many thirds make a hole? Three thirds make a hole. All right, how many fourths make a hole? Four fourths makes a hole. That one's supposed to be a fourth. Some of these have been All right, and then we can go with fifths. So how many fifths make a hole? Five fifths. Okay, how many 
six is? Six, six. Make the hole. And so forth and so on. We can go all the way up to 12s. Now, what do you see? Well, we don't have sevens. We have eights. How many eights make a hole? Eight eights makes a hole. Makes makes one piece. This is a hole. Like, like if eight pieces makes a pie and I ate a whole pie, how many pieces did I make? E. Eight. I ate eight of them. So that's a whole. Depends on how many slices is on it, yes, but but these are equivalent pieces or same size pieces. So we go to back to, we go to with tenths. How many tenths make a hole? Ten tenths makes a hole. given to me like this yeah I guess they just want you to see and then we have 12 we have 12 so how many 12 make a hole 12 12 makes a hole now, what do you notice as the denominator gets what? What happens? As the denominator gets bigger, the pieces get what? Smaller, very good. The smaller numbers make bigger pieces. Yeah, it's it's, it's taking out. less amount to fill in the hole. Now, right, because there's more of them. This is what you call a unit fraction. One piece or one twelfth, anything that's a one over number, that is a unit fraction. So one half is a unit fraction. One third is a unit fraction. One fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one eighth, one tenth, one twelfth. One four hundredths is a unit fraction. Now, if I wanted to see if a number was equivalent, say equivalent to one half, is two thirds equivalent to one half? No, why? It's not equal. Okay. Is two fourths equivalent yes. to one half? Yes. yes, because it is equal. What about two fifths? Okay, well, what about three fifths? No. Only the fourth. All right, well, what about three sixths? Three six is equivalent. What about three eighths? No, but what can I do? Add one eighth, and then it makes it equivalent. All the, not all the, like, even numbers can do it, but all the odd numbers can do it. Yeah. Like, one eighth. Okay, yeah. Very good. That's a good observation, Mason. Good job. All right, now. So, this is one way to figure out if something is equivalent. If it lines up on this chart, right here, on the chart that's on your paper, then it is equivalent. Let's see how many.
many of these I throw them around. On page 114 says fractions that cover the same space are equivalent. If one third is split into two equal parts, the parts are one sixth of a whole. So if one third is split into two equal parts, Right here, it'd be two six or three ninths or four twelfths. That means they are equivalent. If one third is split into four equal parts, the parts are one twelfth of a whole. The so one, two, three, four. Now, the best way for me to teach you or for you to understand equivalent fractions is using multiplication and division. We've already talked about it a little bit with our morning work, but we're going to continue on that. We're going to touch on that a little bit more. What? Mm -hmm. Like this morning we added mixed numbers. We'll learn about that in a couple weeks. What? It's not going to be big now. So, it says to represent fractions in a smaller part, you multiply it by a fraction that has the same numerator and denominator. This will not change the value of the fraction because it multiplied by one does not change the value of an other fraction. So if I wanted to find out, like the other day we had a morning work that said um, fill in the missing fractions and it was like, let me see. Hold on, I'll just bring it up. Right here, the missing denominator. Okay, this is equivalent fractions right here because you multiply the top by two, by three, and then by four. So then you multiply the bottom by two, by three, by four. You get 10 if you add the top numbers. So, when they're there, when I say you're going to multiply the top and the bottom both by the same fraction or by two, that would get one times two is two, three times two is six. So that gives you two six as an equivalent fraction to one third. If I took one third and multiplied it by four, top and bottom, that would be 1 times 4 would be 4, and 3 times 4 would be 12. So 4 twelfths is an equivalent fraction to 1 third. Now, if I have a bigger fraction and I want to simplify it or make it its smallest self, then I'm going to divide. So if both of the numbers on the fraction, the numerator and the denominator, are both even numbers, you know you can divide it by 2, to get the smallest number. So two divided by two is one, six divided by two is three. Four divided by four is one, 12 divided by four is three. So they both are equivalent. So let's look, Oops, sorry. It was my mouse. Because it is a live image. It says use a model or operation to determine an equivalent fraction for each fraction. So if I want to find an equivalent fraction for two-thirds, 
I can look on my chart or I can just multiply the top and the bottom both by a number. Y'all need to sit up. If you are going to sleep, you need to wake up. So let's take the first one, multiply it by two. So times two times two. So two times two is four. Three times two is six. So an equivalent fraction for two thirds is four six. All right, number two, eight tenths. We can either multiply or divide. What do you want to do, multiply or divide? Multiply. Multiply, what are we multiplying it by? Four. Times four, that's fine. So eight times four is? 32, I think. 32, and 10 times four is? 40, so 32 fortieths is an equivalent fraction to 8 tenths. So 2 fifths, you can't divide that down because that's already to a very small form. Okay. Um, so we need to multiply so we're going to take two fifths and let's multiply it by three thirds. Times three thirds. So two times three and five times three. So two times three is six. Five times three is 15, six fifteenths. It's an equivalent fraction. Y'all paying attention or y'all uh, staring at each other? gazing into each other's minds to learn the answer. Um, this what? So if the two numbers are there, they're attention. So What, buddy? Say that again. Yes, uh, what do you mean? Right here? No, that's just what I multiplied the fraction by to find an equivalent fraction. My fraction was two fifths. Now, for number, my original fraction is three tenths. I wanna find an equivalent fraction so I'm just gonna multiply it by two. That's the, just the easiest thing to do. So I'm gonna multiply three times two and 10 times two. So three times two is six, 10 times two is 20. So six twentieths is an equivalent fraction with three tenths. Are y'all getting what I'm saying or am I talking to myself today? No, I feel like it's a whole lot of talking to myself. All right, you guys do the last four on your paper. What? Working on five, six, seven, and eight. You get a piece of paper out, so I'm here. Okay. 
we can still get their donuts so we don't have to recall and change the number and um, somebody will probably just take them. What? Can you sharpen your pencil? Is that what you said? Yes. That one's probably not going to sharpen in that sharpener. You're just going to have to get a different pencil. There's one on your floor, on the floor in front of you. send a message out this evening about details about the morning, about when to show up, what time is starting, and all of that good stuff. Do a number five, six, seven, eight. Six, eight, four fifths, three six, and six twelves.
right, so let's look at these fractions. Now, there are a, many different things you can, many diff, oh, let me get my words out here. Talking is not good today. Talking is not happening very well today. There are multiple different answers you could have gotten for this. So I'm going to take each one of them. So we're going to take six eighths. I need to get my black pen. I don't know why I'm writing it. It's very squeaky. Six eighths. And I'm just going to do all of them well, up to 10, the possible fractions that it could be. So if I multiply by two, then that would be 12 sixteenths. If I do it by three, that would be 18, eight, 16, 27. Okay, if I do it by four, six and four is 24. 8, 16, 32. So, if I kept going, did any of y'all get any of these equivalent fractions right here? I got 27. 18, You got 18, 27? So you yeah. multiply the top and the bottom both by 3. Now, you could have honestly divided it, taken 6 eighths, and divided it by 2. Divide by 2 over 2, which would give you 3 fourths. So you could have gotten 3 fourths, 12 sixteenths, 18 27, 24 32s. If you kept going, 3 times 5, that would be 6, 5 is 30, 8 times 5 is 40. Yep. If you did it times 6, could keep going, times six would be 36, six times eight is 48. So you could have just kept going. Those are all equivalent fractions to six eighths. Destiny, sit up. Your book should be open. You should be looking at what you did. All right, then we have four fifths. Four fifths, so we, if we multiply it by two, that would give us eight tenths times three would give us 12 fifteenths times four would give us 16 twentieths times five. So four times five is 20. 5 times 5 is 25. So, see, these are all equivalent. I got, I got 12 15. You got 12 15 You multiplied it by 3? I got, yeah. I got 12 15. You got 8 10s? Very good. My next one, 3 6. 3 6. All right, times 2 would be what? Six twelfths times three would be nine. Would it be six twelfths or no. one half? It'd be six twelfths. Now you could divide. I'll get to that in just a minute. I'll get. Come on, hold that. Hold that thought, okay? All right. So times three would be nine eighteenths times four would be twelve. 24ths. Now, what Kamani was saying is, could it be one half? Now, it can be one half because if I divide the top and the bottom both by three, because three divided by three is one, six divided by three is two. So that is also an answer you could have gotten. You could have gotten one half. 6 12 9 18 12 24 if i kept going it would be 15 
6 times 5 is 30. You got 6, 12, yeah. And now we can do 6 twelfths. Now this one, because it's 6 twelfths, I'm going to go ahead and divide first because I know 6 can go into 12. So I'm going to divide the top and the bottom both by 6, which would give me 1 half. But you could have taken 6 twelfths and multiplied it by to make it other equivalent fractions. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. So 12 24 Then you can do times 3. That would be 18. 12 24 36. And we have 6 12 18 24. 12 times Two, three, four, twelve, forty-eight, twelve, twenty-four, thirty-six, forty-eight. Sorry, sorry, guys. I was just uh, writing away on my pad. Times two, three, four, times five. So six times five is thirty. Twelve times five is. 60. So you could have gotten any of those. You could have gotten 1 half, 12 24th, 18 36, 24 48, 36th, or you got 6. The answer was the question was 6 12. on page 115 in your book. As many as I want. Now you should have this in front of you. So you should be able to see the lines. If you don't. Because it's through a camera. Turn on the light, see if that helps. It's the same. I have the same book as y'all. What about you? Yeah. Destiny, sit up. On page 115. Well, that's not page one, we're on 115. It says the models are shaded to show two equivalent fractions. So what is this equivalent fraction? Well, let's see how much the whole is. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten as the whole. What part of the fraction is that gonna be? What part of the fraction has is the whole? Not the numerator, the denominator. The denominator is how many there are. The numerator is how many of them is shaded. Girls, open your eyes. Y'all should be away. So how many is shaded? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six tenths. And then let's look at our next one. We have one, two, three, four, five. So that's my denominator. How many of them is shaded is? So three fifths and six tenths are equivalent. Do we see that answer? What do the model show? It shows six tenths and three fifths. That's why you write them right here. And if they're lined up right here, that means they're equivalent. So that would be C. So, looking at a number line here. Now, when you see a number line when it comes to fractions, I would just go ahead and change it into a rectangular shape. C. 
so we have change it into a rectangular shape so it looks like the one above now because we know this is a hole from here to here is a hole what buddy yes Kamani It says, use the number line to answer the question about the fraction one-half. So one-half right here, using the number line, why well, I change my number line into being a area model. It says, which fraction is equivalent to one-half? All right, so we have five-eighths, three-eighths, four-eighths, and three-fourths. So obviously, it's going to be broken up into eighths. So on my number line, if you saw, there was a dash. On, there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dashes. That means there's eight pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we need to figure out which one is equivalent to one half. So I'm just going to shade in up to one half, and I'm going to see how many eights equals a half. I have one, two, three, four shaded out of eight, so that would be four eighths. So four eighths is equivalent to one half. Number three, it says this picture shows a fraction model says, which fraction is equivalent to the fraction that's represented the shaded area? So, we can count it up and we can say, all right, how many total pieces are there? Six. There's six total pieces. How many of them are shaded? Two. Two, six. Or, if you turn it, and let's just pretend we're going to make this one, we're going to switch these two, and this one's going to be white now. All right, so now I have one, two, three. So how many? Oh, okay. So we have four, six. This is how many of the fraction model represents the shaded area? I'm lost. I'm lost. Thanks for your honesty. So. I just changed this one to be white and this one to be shaded just so I can show the shaded parts can be beside each other. So they can be, all right. So now let's take our two six and let's do the multiplication thing. So times two would give me what? Times two would give me what? Four, four what? Four, 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 eight, four, eight, four, eight, four eight, twelves. Eight. Is that answer on my choice? Eight. Yes, it is. Destiny set up. Zamir, turn around. All right, number four. It says, which pair of figures has shaded parts that represent equivalent fractions? So we have how much here? What's my fraction here? A. No. What's my first one? These are two no. different fractions. Mm -hmm. One half and mm -hmm. alright, so we have one half and one fourth. One half, one fourth. Alright, then we have how much here? One third. One third, one third and then what? Well, it's no, two six. Two six. 
five, six, and four, six. And then we have two fours and three fourths. It says which one represent an equivalent fraction? So can one half and one fourth be equivalent? No. Okay, let's come back to this one. What about five, six, and four, six? Maybe. No, it can't. The clue to know if it's an equivalent fraction is if the denominators are different. Because it can't be equivalent if it has the same denominator. So it is B. Because I multiply this by 2, and it should give me three, six, 2, 6. So 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So it's a model are shaded to show two equivalent fractions. It says, what do the models show? So how much is in this first fraction? How much is in the first one? Three fourths. How much is this one? Six eighths. Six eighths. Six eighths. So three fourths is equal to Six eighths. And then number six. Austin shades the circle to show how many slices of pie have been eaten. It says which equation shows equivalent fractions that represent Charles? Please stop that represent the part of the pie that is left. All right, so how much of the pie is left? Well, how many total slices are there? There's six. There's six total slices. How many of them is left over? Four, six is left over. So which equation shows the equivalent fraction that represents the part of the pie that is left? Austin shaded the circle to show how many slices of pie have been eaten. So there's four six. So we need to figure out a fraction that is equivalent to four six. Okay, well, there's only one choice it could be. There's only one four six in here, and then it's D. Now, I'm going to show y'all a trick to figure out if a problem is equivalent to each other. So I'm gonna take six twelfths, y'all can't see that, I'm sorry. Six twelfths and let's say three six, okay? If I wanna tell if it is an equivalent, another thing I could do is to cross multiply. I can do Six times six and 12 times three. So six times six is, six times six is 36. 36. 12 times three is 30. 36. 36. Say it, Kamani. 36. 36. So if these numbers are equal, then that means they are equivalent fractions. So I could go back in here and see if these are equivalent fractions. I have six times two is 12, 12 times one is 12. So two twelfths and one six are equivalent fractions. But that wasn't what the question was asking for. So if you knew two six was how much that was in the problem, instead of multiplying it, by each number individually, I could take two six and multiply the cross multiply and see which one would be equal. Okay, so if I did six times two 
give me 12, 6 times 4, 24. Are they equivalent? Are 4, 6, and 2, 6 equivalent? Mm -hmm. No, because they both give me, one gives me 24 and one gives me 12. All right, so then I do 6 times 6 is 36. 12 times 2 is 24. So is B equivalent? No. I have 2 fourths and 2 six. 6 times 2 is 12. 4 times 2 is 8. Are they equivalent? No. All right, then I have 4 twelfths and 2 six. So 6 times 4 is 24. 12 times 2 is 24. So are they equivalent? Yeah, because yes. they both have 24. Whew.